So how do we see in the actions of what Christians do, what some of the key beliefs are that they have, and how do we see maybe some of the changes that might happen in a Christian when they do these different ceremonies? A sacrament within Christianity means a physical representation or a ritual or an action that shows a spiritual change. So a spiritual change has happened in somebody and the actions that you do in the church or the ceremony that you're doing show that change. Now, it's not something that all Christians agree on. Some of the ideas are things that all Christians agree on. They're, they're all called Christians after all. There's key things they do believe in. But the actions and the ceremonies and the ways that it done, it's done and the meaning that some of them have might be a little bit different depending on the type of church. So for this um, video, you need to know the difference between, you've got the Roman Catholic Church, you've got the Church of England, sometimes called Anglican, and then you have churches called non-conformist, who are Protestant, but are not the Church of England. So actually through how they celebrate or not the sacraments, you'll see some of these differences a bit more clearly. So if a sacrament is an outward sign of an inward spiritual change, what kind of change are we talking about? Well, within, the Catholic Church, there are seven different sacraments, seven actions or rituals or ceremonies that can happen in church that show the change in a person. And you have these on a list on your worksheet. Examples are, for example, baptism, showing that someone has become or been born into the faith, into Christianity. That's showing a spiritual change that this person is a Christian. So baptism is a really important sacrament within the Catholic Church often done as a baby, infant baptism. We'll talk about that later in the lesson. Other sacraments in the Catholic Church are um, confession and forgiveness. So in the Catholic Church, people can go and confess their sins to the priest who helps um, to get God's forgiveness for that person. Obviously God is forgiving, but by confessing it and then reconciling with God, they're getting forgiven. It shows a difference in their spirituality, but it's a kind of physical action that they go and do. Another sacrament in Catholic Christianity is marriage. You are changing spiritually from being single to married. You've become two, have become one. You've become one spiritual like couple. Okay, so it's a sacrament. Something has happened spiritually, eternally, in heaven as well as on earth. So you might remember that from our marriage and family unit that for the Catholic Church, you then can't get divorced because this sacrament has brought people together. And you remember that in the other churches, you can get divorced because it's not seen as a sacrament, okay? So there are more sacraments in the Catholic Church than there are in the others. And there's other ones you can have as an example. And the very important one is one sacrament that's called different things in the different churches, which can be confusing, but it's the same essential story that's being represented. And that's why I have this with me here, the chalice or the cup that's used. You may know it as the bread and the wine. You may know it as communion. You may know it as mass. You may also know it as Eucharist. So I'm gonna call it Eucharist because that's uh, the fancy name for it. It's good for you to get used to it. Okay, and it's one sacramental action that happens. And in the Catholic Church, it's very important and seen as a spiritual change in a person where you are partaking in the bread and the wine that in the Catholic Church is seen to literally become the body and blood of Jesus. It becomes the body and blood of Jesus, and it is partaken in this ceremony, this special action, showing a spiritual change in the person that you are taking in part of Jesus and taking part in this ceremony. Now, for the Catholic faith, there are seven sacraments that are, have been developed over time because the tradition of the church is very important. Last lesson, you might have remembered that for Catholic Christians, you've got the Bible, and the example of Jesus, but also the traditions of the church, the ways that the church has developed over time. So these sacraments have developed over time to being the seven things that are seen to be done in church together that have a spiritual meaning, a physical action that has a spiritual meaning. Okay, so if the Catholic church has seven sacraments, what about the other types of church? Well, the second group I said to you, was Anglican or Church of England. And you only have two sacraments in the Church of England. They don't have seven like you have got in the Catholic Church. Marriage is not seen as a sacrament. It's important, it's very special, but it's not seen as a sacrament in the Church of England. It's not seen as an eternal spiritual change in a person. It's just a marriage. And you can get divorced. 
you can't in the Catholic Church remember because marriage is a sacrament. So why is there less sacraments in the Church of England, in the Anglican Church, than there is in the Catholic Church? Well, those other sacraments developed over time, I said, over time with the tradition of the Church. And the Church of England and the Anglican Church says, well, no, we just ought to go back to what was originally done by the first Christians, not something's developed over time. Our authority is the Bible and the early Christians. So what is in the Bible? What does it say in here about these sacraments? And really, there's only two that you can sort of directly link back to Jesus himself explicitly from the Bible. And those two are baptism, same as in the Catholic faith, and I'm going to call it Eucharist again, but it's the bread and the wine, communion, mass, that one there. So why are these two seen as important and, and sacraments in the Church of England or the Anglican Church? Well, Jesus was baptised by John the Baptist, and he commanded Christians to go and baptise people when they become Christian, go and baptise them, bring them into the faith. And you'll look at some videos and investigate a bit what that means. Baptism is kind of going underwater or having water on the head as a baby. So Jesus instructed people to do this and he had it done himself. So, okay, that's very important. We're going to do that. What about the Eucharist, bread and the wine and communion? And again, you're going to look more detail about what it is. But Jesus instructed Christians in the Bible at something called the Last Supper, so the day before he's killed on the cross, so Monday, Thursday of that week, he dies on the Friday, rises on the Sunday. He instructs his followers when they're eating together for Passover, remember he's a good Jewish uh, boy, for Passover, he instructs his followers to take bread, he, he raises the bread as you would in a Passover meal and breaks the bread, blesses it and says, this is my body broken for you, take and eat and remember what I've done. Same with the wine. This is my blood shed for you. Take and drink. So he's instructing the disciples and therefore Christians further on to do this action, to eat the, the, the bread and drink the wine. Now, for Protestants, Jesus does not literally um, appear in the bread and the wine. It doesn't change into him, literally. It's a very powerful symbol for them. It's symbolic. It's symbolic of his blood and his body. It's not actually his blood and body. Whereas remember for the Catholics, the sacrament of the Eucharist, there's a very powerful, basically a miracle that happens every time that it still looks like bread and wine, but it is the body and blood of Jesus in a kind of mysterious, miraculous way. For Church of England and other Protestants, it has not become him. It's a symbol of the sacrifice he made. As just like the lamb that was killed, so that the angel of death would pass over the door of the Israelites back with Moses, remember fleeing Egypt, this is the story he is remembering on this day when he's doing this meal. He says, now it's me, I'm the one dying so that the angel of death will pass over you and you can get to eternal life if you become a Christian. So the Eucharist is a very important sacrament too. And that is what is in the Church of England. So you have those two, baptism and Eucharist. You don't have seven like you have in the Catholic Church. Why? Because these are the two that Jesus did and instructed people to do. And so for um, Protestant Christians, these two are very important. So what about the non-conformist churches? Well, they don't even really tend to use the word sacrament or ritual or ceremony. They're a lot more, uh, I guess, free we talked about them having more freestyle of prayer, non-liturgical worship, non-liturgical prayer. They still do do these actions and they're very important. They'll have baptisms. You've got the Baptist church as a hint there. Um, often adult baptisms rather than baby. You'll see that later in the lesson. Um, and they will do communion or the Eucharist, but rather than have it as a kind of very special ceremony, they say, look, Jesus was just eating. He said, take and eat. So that's what we're going to do. So when I've been to non-conformist uh, meetings, we may have just had a loaf of bread that's just broken and shared around. Sometimes they just call it breaking bread. Today, we're just going to break bread together and they'll just sip. It might be grape juice. It might be wine, possibly, or Ribena. They'll just pass it around without so many of the kind of prayers and rituals that you'll get in the other two types. So they still do those two things because Jesus instructs people to and it's in the Bible. But 
they won't have as much liturgy and like formal stuff around it as you might get in the Church of England. And then that is even more so in the Catholic Church, we've got seven of these sacraments going on. So these are three different approaches. Some of you might feel like you know those three quite well, and you could go off and start to research, well, how are these done in the Greek Orthodox or the Russian Orthodox churches, where traditions have developed very differently on top of that in a different way. But these are the three that I would like you to know for this course. You've got the Roman Catholic, the Protestant um, Anglican Church of England, and then the Nonconformist churches. So you're going to look now at the different ways that they do these sacraments um, and why you have a difference between the three different churches. Please feel free to stop and re replay any of this clip if you like and ask me any questions. Um, but I hope that explains to you a little bit why these different actions are done in the church and that the sacraments are this outward sign of an inner spiritual change. Okay, goodbye. <laughs>